milestone in motorcycle history. Ferrari on two wheels, six World Superbike Championship titles. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes, no, no, feast your soul on the Ducati 916. I was too young back then, so I can only imagine how people reacted when this came out. Mind you, in 1994, motorcycles looked different, more bulky and heavy. Think you've been watching Roseanne all your life, and then all of a sudden you switch to Baywatch and you see Pamela Anderson for the first time. As a matter of fact, Massimo Tamburini designed this bike after the shapes of a woman. The front end being the bust, the tank being the upper body, and the seat being the hips. So when you're sitting on it, well, I guess I can see where the appeal comes from. The bike looked so good back then, it didn't just feature on the front page of every bike magazine, it went straight to the Museum of Modern Art. But all this beauty wasn't an end in itself. The slim shapes meant that the bike was lighter. The underseat exhaust helped aerodynamics and power, and the one-sided swing arm made it easier to change wheels when racing. Now, thanks to these things, this bike improved upon its predecessor, the 888, in many ways. Horsepower jumped from 94 to 112. Dry weight plummeted from 219 to 207 kilograms, and thanks to its shortened wheelbase, it also handled a lot better too. And all these things together made the 916 a racing legend. King Carl Fogarty, Troy Corsa and Troy Bayless took six World Superbike Championship titles on the 916. And that's not even counting the sheer endless number of wins recorded by such iconic riders as James Toseland, Neil Hodgson, Ben Bostrom, Frankie Keeley or Ruben Zaus. The 916 reigned supreme when the World Superbike Championship was in its prime, rivaling even the mighty 500cc Motorcycle Grand Prix in popularity. It made Carl Fogarty the most successful rider in World Superbike history. You know, until Johnny Ray came along on this weird green frog of his. Hats off to Ray, but I don't think we'll be seeing his bike in a museum of modern art anytime soon. This bike turned Ducati from a medium-sized Italian bike maker into one of the most desirable motorcycle brands in the world. You can tell just how much impact this machine had when you look how much it diminished its successor, the 999. While technically improved in pretty much every way and again very successful in World Superbikes, the 999 suffered from its looks 
which were perceived as a far cry from Tamburini's creation. The 1098 and the 1198 then picked up cues in terms of styling from the 916 again, and even the Panigale still shows the heritage. I mean, just take a look at the one-sided swing arm and the double headlights. The Ducati 916 has left a mark on the motorcycle world with its design, technology and racing success. It's a history that I can really only scratch with this video, so stay tuned for some deep dives. In the meantime, do you think the 916 is the icon people say it is? And do you believe that the Panigale can rival its legacy? Tell me in the comments below while I keep working on some new videos. Donny Desmo, out. It made con <laughs> I'm gonna fall in my hair. I'm falling on your hair. <laughs> Tell me in the comments why I'm making uh, making uh, dry weight plummeted from 217 to 204 kilograms. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I love him holding this. Okay. You can tell just how much impact this bike had by uh, a Ducati 911. <laughs> It's a history? No, that's wrong.